going to live stream the meeting. And then right live on Facebook. Meeting. We're live on Facebook. Oh well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm thank you for that, Reddy, because normally <laughs> I'm yapping away saying we're not uh, live yet. So um, right, it's just taking me through because I can't see the screen at the moment. So anyway, uh, welcome everybody. Welcome to another Brookside interview. It's been quite a while actually. It's been about five weeks since I did the last one, so I was a little bit nervous tonight. But I was waiting to get my hair cut, you see, because um, yeah. Right, are we live now? We're live, right, okay. Uh, yeah, it says so. <laughs> uh, it says so, well, that must be true. Right, live on Facebook, yeah, we are. Oh, I can relax now. So, Renny, how are you? And thank you for joining me. Well, I'm fine, thank you for asking me. Um, it's uh, it's going back into ancient history, as you said, but uh, I'm ready to go there, so ask away. Yes, okay. Well, shall we begin then with the first question? First of all, I just must ask you, how have you found lockdown? Because it's such a, you know, a very questionable time at the moment. There's a big well, um, over theatres and it's hateful. Um, but you know, when when lockdown first started back in March 2020, yeah. um, I gave up 13 different jobs oh. uh, overnight, which was tough, devastating. Um, you know, lots of Terry, Telly, Terry, Telly series and uh, some theatre jobs, quite a lot of theatre jobs. So, uh, but at first I, I treated it as an extended period of not working, yes. uh, which we all have, well, certainly mm -hmm. in this profession. Um, so we went to B&Q and bought lots of paint and all the things we needed to do to do the house, which we would never have done. Yeah. Um, and by the time August came, we were heartily sick of waking up in the morning and thinking we've got to open another can of paint and do some more decorating. Um, and that took us through till September, really. Yeah. We did the whole house top to bottom. Um, but by then, we were both getting pretty fed up of yes. not doing anything. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the soaps had all shut down. They, they'd started again in July, I think, yes. uh, very tentatively. Um, mercifully, some I did some music videos, um, which were, were good. Uh, I oh, also, tell us about I, those. I would point out that for people that don't understand that I, I now uh, have diversified and I, I earn my money doing violence on screen and theatre. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a stunt coordinator, fight director, whatever you want to call it. Ah, I've got that all written down as well here. <laughs> Pardon? I've got this all written down here in my oh, first have, question. Right. <laughs> so we, we I did a few music videos, which was nice. And then Emmerdale came back, which was lovely. Yes. Um, and then Emmerdale went away when we had the next lockdown. Yes. Um, and that scuppered everything over Christmas. Um, and it was, it was desperate is the wrong word. I think it's been desperate for a lot of people, which has mm. been tragic. Um, you know, there's, what is it, three million people that have not had a penny in support from the government, something like that. Um, yes. My partner being one of them, which is pretty ghastly. No. Uh, she kind of fell between two stools. But, um, you know, I, I got my self-employment grant. Yeah, I got that, uh, which helped. Mm. Uh, but it, it's been tough. It's been tough for everybody because there's, you know, when your whole profession shuts down, mm. there's nowhere you can go and get a living it, it's you know it's always a competitive profession mm. um but when there's nothing to compete for and you know they're, they're, nobody is doing anything nobody's making anything no. um nobody's producing anything there is nothing to do no. so that was reassuring in some way it's not that you know i was losing out to other people um it happens occasionally but i was losing you know it, it, there was nothing to lose out to um but I have to say, um, from March this year, um, things, have, things have taken a, a, an upturn. Things are now starting to come back. Uh, Theatre is starting to come back. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. but it I really hope to it's going to be June. Hmm. Pardon? I really hope the theatres start opening their doors. Yeah, so do people. I. I mean, it's, um, it's, a, it's a great source of entertainment. It's a great source of employment. And there's a lot of people involved. And you know, I, I don't see how it can work with you know rows blocked off and mm. you know a, 
a 30% audience, 50% audience even, you know, theatres, I mean, some theatres are very lucky to get a 50% audience, but they can't, they can't really survive on that, you know, you, no. have, to, you have to be up at the 70% to be kind of breaking even, making a bit of money. Mm. Uh, it's very difficult. Um, rehearsals are difficult, masks on, masks off. Um, nobody's really sure of the COVID rules and everybody, I know they they talk about the COVID rules and we we have them ran down our throat all the time, you know, with all 24 all seven. Pardon? 24 seven we have them run yeah, down. Yeah, and, and, and I think we're all a bit heartily sick of that now, to be honest. Um, yes. And I think I, I really, everybody I speak to just wants to get back to work, just want to do other things. Um, and everybody, again, is I think is now accepting that this COVID thing, it's real and it's going to be there, just like influenza is there, just like measles, mumps, rubella, all those things are there. Mm. Um, and we just have to live with it because it, it isn't going to miraculously go away like it does in the movies. It's just no. not, it, you know, they, 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 suddenly it's not going to rain and oh, it, it, every, everybody's cured. It, that's not going to happen. No. But the news today was very good. They I don't really want to talk about death on this, but they said <laughs> that for the first time, um, deaths um, from COVID were not the not the main source of deaths in this country. So that's that's a in a strange way, that's a good thing because that means COVID is now being dealt with, you know, and yeah. as people can get vaccinations. And I'm for vaccinations. I don't don't really see why people aren't for vaccinations. But I'm for vaccinations because I had one for TB and flu and just like that, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we have vaccinations to go abroad. You mm. know, they don't let us into certain countries if you're not vaccinated against all the dreadful diseases they have. Um, and it, to me, it just makes sense, you know. Um, Absolutely. So, I've had mine. I'm quite happy. Um, you had and both of them. Maria, pardon. Have you had, I've had both? Yeah. Oh um, God. I, I'm surprised because I went to my doctor's um, back in January and I said I'm not supposed to be having mine until April. Mm. And they said, Oh well, we're the we're the hub. We're we're where they deliver everything. So we're getting on a, a head. So they did. They've done everybody months early, which is mm. I'm, certainly for work. It's great. Definitely. Yeah. And it'd be nice to experience live gigs as well, because I had tickets for a concert and that's been cancelled oh, twice. We had, we had tickets for concerts and, you know, that, that I think one of them's now been put back to next year. Yeah, um, I've, same as mine. It was last year and then it was delayed to this year. And it was uh, and now it's next year. All being well. Yes. Well, I mean, I, I've got tickets for a gig in July. I think it's the first of July. We'll see whether that happens or not. Um, I What's mean, the gig? Uh, it's it's a band I've loved for a long time. It's George Thorogood and the Destroyers. You may, okay. or may not know them, um, but I love them. Uh, and they're supposed to be coming over, but whether they can come over from the States or not, who knows? You know, I heard today that the America was stopping all travel to the UK. So um, that's not good either. You know, no. um, who knows? It's, no. it's a very uncertain world and it's very difficult to make any plans at the moment. It um, is that's you know that's the problem i mean i'm uh, on a personal note we were supposed to be getting married last november we've now changed it to this november we oh, were going to get married in may advanced, to thank you we had to change that so we're hoping that we don't have a third wave and another lockdown and we can actually have the people that we want at the wedding not the people that the government says we can have absolutely there you are yeah ask me another yeah, oh, okay. Well, we'll start with the first question then, because just to start off, because as well as an actor, it's what you were saying before, you've also had a long, illustrious career ranging from qualified fencing, wrestling, boxing, bare knuckle fighting, to name just some. Um, but going back to your very first TV role, it's listed on your IMDb profile. I don't know if you've ever checked that out. Um, it was the classic spy series, Secret Army, is that right? Secret Army, yes. Yeah. And you were an SS officer, weren't you? Uh, I was. That's you remember anything long... about that? But I do remember it because it was the first time I'd ever been in a proper television studio. Mm. Um, and it was the first time I'd ever kind of just turned up and not rehearsed. Uh, I mean, a lot of the time back in the 60s and 70s, well, I wasn't really doing anything in the 60s, but in the 70s, um, the BBC used to give time for rehearsals. 
Mm. Um, it doesn't happen anymore, very rarely. No. Uh, so I, I turned up at um, BBC TV Centre um, in Shepherd's Bush in London mm. um, and, uh, you know, went to reception, was shown to my dressing room um, and was kind of left. Um, nobody came to see. I was just there. I didn't know where to go or what to do. Um, I, was, I was very young and very green and I, I just didn't, didn't know how it worked. Um, and then suddenly I got the call to to come on set and you know I was in in my um I think I had a long leather coat on or something I don't think I was in uniform I think I was Gestapo or SS something like that yes um, pardon I said oh yes yes oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and um and I went on set and suddenly there's three cameras and one had a red light on and another one had a red and I, it was, it's a lot to take in. Uh, it was very nerve wracking. Mm. Uh, my mother told me I was very good. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, I, I think I, I remember, with confidence. I remember very little about it apart from that, apart from, you know, I felt, oh good, I've cracked it. I've done my first telly, so now I'm, I'm gonna go and do loads. Yes, um, you have. It didn't work like that, unfortunately. Um, you know, it was back to the theater straight away. Uh, but I, you know, uh, I, I did my fair share of telly over the years, but I you have your IMDb list. It's very long. Is it? Yeah. Is that, I can so... remember you were in, I do recall seeing you in, I think it was the first prime suspect. Was I it? was in the first prime suspect. Yeah. Was it as a barrister? And uh, the first prime suspect, wait a minute, I'm getting it mixed up with cracker. The first prime suspect, I think I was, I think I was the foreman of the jury. Yes, that's it, because I can remember thinking, oh, my God, it's just like... No. <laughs> you do have a lot of authoritative roles, don't you? Um, I play a lot of villains. You have played a lot of villains. I've played a lot of villains. I've played a lot of barristers. Yes. Yeah, now, where's the connection in that, I wonder? I do, actually. <laughs> I do wonder, but... <laughs> um, we'll do I don't think I've ever played a doctor. <laughs> um, yeah, lots of barristers, lots of villains. I'd never really thought about that connection, but that's definitely one. Um, I, I've kind of also done, you know, a, a, quite a lot of children's TV, children's series, but I was always the bad one of them, wasn't it? Pardon? Children's Ward was one of them, I'm sure. I did Children's Ward. I did um, Just Us, was it? I think it was Just Us. It was a Kenny Miller series. <laughs> Oh yes, uh, yeah. Did a did a two maybe three series of that that was great fun to do to be honest. Um, did all the soaps except EastEnders. Um, oh, I've got some questions about the soaps for you later. I'll go on. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> um, but yes, so um, that that's all I can say really about Secret Army. I still, oh the the only other little anecdote is I still get the odd repeat from it, it's still being shown somewhere in the world. You know, I get two pounds every six months or something. Oh, wow. <laughs> what do you do with that? It's not that much up, of an eh? wow. Yeah. I think it's like 40 odd years old. <laughs> it's Talking Pictures, I think it was shown, was it? Was it shown on Talking Pictures? I don't know. I mean, it, it gets shown in, I don't know. I You know, you get repeats from Zimbabwe and places like that. Wow. You know, <laughs> Oh, it's good that, I mean, 40 years on and you're still getting repeat fees for that, that is still quite Yes, but, you know, to, to, well, I suppose... You can get your repeat fees for Brookside, because I'm still on with this campaign to... I've actually sent the petition off to Channel 4, so I'm waiting to hear back from them, because it's like 7,000 signatures now. Really? Um, yeah. Well, you see, I mean, the, the programme was incredibly popular, and yeah. it was it was groundbreaking in its day, and it probably still is a bit groundbreaking, you mm. know, it... it it did things differently, um, and it was it was kind of nerve wracking, but fun. It was a bit ramshackle um, because we, you know, I mean, they've they've now moved to um, another place that's uh, just outside of uh, Liverpool, just before you kind of get on the main drag in there. But um, then we had a whole um, Brookside Crescent. Brookside Close. Yes. You know, we had all that. Um, and there was just a barrier um, where real people lived and yes. then a barrier and then where all the Brookside people lived. Mm -hmm. it, and there was a little car park just across the way. So it was, there was, I don't remember there being any security or anything. I mean, I don't think it could exist now. I really don't. No. Um, it was, 
it was tucked away. So if you didn't know it was there, you wouldn't, wouldn't know, know it was there. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, outside Corey, there's always people hanging around with autographs, and outside Emmerdale Studios, there's always people peering over the fence. Mm. Um, but Brookside, uh, yeah, Brookside, you never, you never saw anybody. You know, they, they, really? nobody came round. You know, I mean, you got stopped in the street all the time, obviously. But oh, um, well, I've got a question for you about that as well. <laughs> well, ask away. Yeah. Oh well. Okay. Well, question two first. That's a little bit onwards. But the second one is um, because following Secret Army, you had many TV roles, including Crown Court, and I remember that Traveling Man, uh, Bullman, Sky Bandits, and The Whistleblower. And then it was in 1987 you joined Brookside as one of the deadliest, most evil and sadistic gangsters, Sizzler. Um, with a stutter. <laughs> now, can you remember much about that? I know I'm going back, like you said, in ancient history, but can you remember that much about that very first day filming and that very first scene with Paul Usher and Elizabeth Morton? Well, yes, I can. Um... Oh, great. Again, because it was the first day. Uh, but going back a little before that, um, I have to say I had a pretty useless agent at the time. Oh. Um, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think she does it anymore. But anyway, I had a pretty useless agent at the time. And anyway, I got this call um, to go for this character in Brookside. Mm. So I got myself over... Uh, where did we go? We must have gone to Brookside Close, I imagine. Wow. Must have gone there to audition, I think. Mm. And I remember going up some stairs and into a little room. Um, and I was met by there were six or seven men there, uh, all obviously there for the same part. And they were all kind of big, muscly, you know, chunky men. Looking like henchmen, yes. Yeah, and I yeah. thought, well, there's my agent. She's done it again. She's got it wrong because <laughs> I was, I'm the complete opposite of that. You know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not saying I'm weedy, but I'm not big and muscly and, and like that. So I just sat there, got, got my guardian out and did the crossword and kind of just waited my turn because I thought, well, this is, this is, going to be a waste of time because I'm obviously not physically the type that they're looking for. Mm. And this is the one occasion my agent actually got it right and all the other agents got it wrong. What they were looking for was someone like me um, yeah. and not this big kind of heavy henchman kind of character. Mm. So I went in and uh, the, uh, they'd already written, Jimmy McGovern had already written this character with um, with a stutter, but he he kind of written a stutter on on almost every word, and I just thought this is this is ridiculous. Nobody stutters on every word. Yes. Um, and I I had um an acquaintance at the time who was an artist, still is an artist, um, who had a very bad stutter that was <laughs> kind of in the throat. Mm. And I just thought, you know what, I'm uh, rather than going, you know, I I I just did that at the interview yeah. um got me the job uh so i'm very grateful to him uh for giving me the stutter and so i was amazed i because I, I left the audition thinking sort of wait oh, to go get home it. got on with my life yeah. um got the phone call almost immediately saying you start on monday wow um which was how did you take the news oh i was overjoyed yeah yes, overjoyed um, but I, I, I kind of didn't realise the enormity of what I was getting into. Um, mm. It was it was great. I was going to do a soap. I was going to do more than one episode, um, and the character was kind of fun, really. He was, so, yeah, it was, you know. And but I, I kind of realised I had big shoes to fill um, mm. because we'd had uh, was it Tommy McCardle before me? Yes, Malcolm. Uh... Tierney. Tierney. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I still didn't really get it. So I turned up on set the first day. Um, mm -hmm. And surprise, surprise, everybody's we're running behind. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're running out of time. Oh no. And and they cut 
one of the best scenes. They just said, we're not going to film it. And I said, well, when are we, when are we going to film that? They said, oh, well, we, 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 we won't. We'll just, um, we'll just get on with it. Oh, no. I, was, I was really cross because this was a really good scene. Yeah. Uh, and Phil Redman was there, um, mm. who uh, I actually got on really well with in the end. You know, I mean, we, we just did. Um, but he was, probably still is, a tricky bugger, really. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's a businessman and uh, he speaks his mind and he knows his job. Um, right. So I don't really have a problem with that. But I, I was I was pretty pissed off, to be honest, that mm. they cut my best, what I thought was my best scene. And he said, it doesn't matter. I said, it does matter. It matters to me. It's really important. He said, no, they don't know that I've cut the scene. We've just cut the scene. It'll be fine. And you know what? Really annoyingly, it was fine. You yeah. know, it didn't show in that first episode that they cut a crucial scene it just mm. it just kind of made sense so you know my hat hat off to him really because um i guess he's written enough scripts and has done enough tv to put me to shame so he knows what he's doing you know um mm. a, a awkward moment to start with but you know um everybody got on everybody was incredibly friendly and welcoming it was it was lovely um mm. And suddenly I felt part of a part of a team. Um, yeah. And I still, you know, when I when I go and work at, at Hollyoaks now, I still see quite a lot of the people that were in production that are still in production for Lime Pictures, you know. So known them, you know, 30, 35 years or so, which is, you know, it's a friendship, the long, long term acquaintances, which is good. Definitely. OK, well, are you ready for thank you for that? And are you ready for question three? Yeah. Ask and I'll tell you. Ask and you'll tell. Okay. Well, because Sizzler, I mean, he was, I mean, this is for want of a better word, complex character. Um, <laughs> that's one way of putting it, I suppose. Um, because to the outside world, he was a feared and, you know, a hardened gangster that nobody would want to mess with and get on the wrong side with. But behind closed doors, he valued his family. I know he was totally devoted to his daughters. Indeed. Um, I just wondered how you prepared for the role. I mean, did you go off instinct or had you played a gangster before or had you indeed based Sizzler on anybody you knew? If that's uh, not the question well, to ask. As, I, as I've already said, the, the stutter yeah. came from an artist friend. Yes. Um, no, I, I yeah. kind of, the script, um, you know, Jimmy McGovern had, had kind of created oh, this character um, and he's very good at creating characters. So it was, it was sort of there yeah. as to what the character was like. Mm. Um, and, you know, in those days on Brookside, we did do rehearsals, yes. um, strangely. Okay. And we, we, you know, we went in and we rehearsed the scene and we thought what we were going to do. So I had a bit of time to just kind of play around with the character and the, the directors, I think there were two directors um, that directed the first, first few episodes. Um, and they were the ones at the, the casting. So they were very helpful. Mm. And like an awful lot of telly, you, you have an idea in your head. Um, you learn your lines and you make, try and make sense of it. And I just decided to be, as minimalist as possible, apart from the stutter. Um, Which is very I effective, hope. I have to say, the minimalist that you just said. Well, I, I just, I, I, I thought, I don't, I don't think this man needs to do too much, really. Mm. He's just, he means what he says. He, you know, it's... Which makes it more, I thought it made it more scary that you were minimalist. Well... It was very cut, a sinister calm about him. <laughs> well, that, that was the idea. I just thought, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll be a man of many stutters and few words <laughs> and um and just challenge anybody to mention my stutter yes that was it really yeah. um and th that's where it grew and i uh, you know i decided he had a nice car he had nice suits uh he dressed well he loved his family but mm. he was a criminal mm. um and that just seemed, I don't know why that made sense, but it made sense to me and it seemed to work on the screen. Definitely. So I stayed with that and nobody said I was doing it wrong. So either they didn't want to tell me or I was doing it right. You were uh, doing it, it wrong everybody remembers Sizzler. 
Thank you. It's been, it's been an extraordinarily, uh, it, it's lived a long time and people do seem to remember him, mm. uh, which is very flattering. Yeah, um, I mean, there's so many standout scenes. <laughs> there really was. I mean, I always remember the Sizzler basically demanding that Barry Grant cut off this dog's head, which when I was, I was watching that about eight years old, so I always remembered that scene. It frightened the life out of me. I was horrified, of course. It's not. Well, that, that's, you know, I'm, I'm sure they'd be, um, I'm sure you wouldn't be able to do that today. They, they'd no. probably, they, they, that script's much too harsh for whatever time it went out. Um, I was watching this on a Saturday afternoon tea time. Is that when it went out? I mean, yeah. I, I well, can't it, remember. They put it on, it. I think it was on at half past eight at night, and then they did the omnibus edition on a oh, Saturday. Oh, that's right. Yes, of course. Yeah. of course. And that's normally when I used to watch it, Saturday tea time. So I'm thinking, I can't imagine this going on now at tea time on a Saturday. No, they, they, they just would, would cut it. So they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have that. And I think um, the stutter as well would have a problem. I can imagine the outcries of, oh, it's... Because we're not laughing at stutter. We're not laughing at the stutter or the speech impediment, are we? We're laughing no, at... No, his... I mean, the, I, I, I think it was... I think it was quite brave and sort of sinister to have this um, nasty man with a stutter, as I say, sort of almost challenging anybody to mention it. Yeah. Um, and I, I always felt that he wasn't even particularly embarrassed about it. It was just how he, well, I mean, you know, the, the name Sizzler is a stuff. So that, that made sense to me, you know, the name Sizzler uh, and the sound that he made. Mm. Um, and I, I yeah, I, I, I thought it was a, a kind of rounded character that I, I hope I brought something to. I, Obviously, you did to like it. Thank you. You certainly did. OK, thank you for that. So um, moving on to question four, mm -hmm. let's get some memories going again. Ah, because. Um, oh, that was just about that. So we've uh, I was just going to ask you about the stutter, but we've already done that. So, oh, yes. Following your first episode after, you know, your first episode of Brookside actually going to air. Um, I imagine you got recognised a lot in the street by Brooks. That was very strange. Yeah, yeah. that was very, very odd. Um, I mean, I was at the, I was married at the time. I didn't have any children then. And I remember the first episode had gone out and um, I think my wife and I were in the supermarket. Mm. And my wife said, people are looking at you. <laughs> and I went, why? And I couldn't. And I, I, it still didn't twig, but she became very aware that people were looking at me. Mm. Um, and it was, uh, I think that was the first time that I became aware that the power of television, really. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm doing Brookside. It's, it's, you know, it's watched and it's popular, but I, I didn't really get the, the recognition thing. Um, and then when the second ep went out, um, people were stopping me in the street and asking for autographs. So it was, oh, really? It was... and did you ever, because of course there are people that do actually believe the soaps are real. So did you ever have anybody look at you in fear? And think, oh, it's, it's... Well, I, I did have, um, I remember I was in the Royal Exchange, uh, not the, not the theatre, but the, the, the shopping arcade around the Royal Exchange. Yes. And uh, again, I was, I was in town. Um, I think we were just shopping or window shopping or doing whatever. Um, and I think it was uh, it was after the, the, the dog's head thing. <laughs> and this this lady really laid into me uh, about how evil I was and how she hated me. Uh, and I, you know, I kind of said, well, I'm you know, terribly sorry. And, OK, all right. Value your opinion. Thank you very much. And I went off. And two minutes later, she came up and said, can I have your autograph? <laughs> Um, you said no, <laughs> or did you apply? No, I didn't. I, I just thought that, you know, I, I, I don't ever see any point in being sort of horrible or, or dismissive of people that, you know, either recognise you or want your autograph. Mm. I mean, as a child, um, I was an avid autograph hunter. Mm. I wanted to be an actor since I was ten and a half, and my way into it, I guess, was that I used to collect autographs, and that was that was how I got to sort of meet the stars. And you know, I kind of imagined myself being in this in this world one day. Um, 
I mean, when you're 12 and 13, you know, it is just a dream. Um, so then I went on and decided... And you made that dream come true. Yeah, well, I don't know about the dream coming true. It's been a bit of a nightmare sometimes. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I, it's what I always wanted to do. And I went out and did it. I became an actor, uh, rightly or wrongly. Um, and it, it made a living at it. I'm quite, quite happy to say, you know, for too long, some people will say, but I've made a living at it. So I'm, I'm I guess sort of done all right, I think, you know, yeah, well, um, yeah. not as wonderful as I wanted to, but certainly not as bad as I could have done. Well, so, yeah, I mean, you've got so many different things that you're doing now, as I mentioned earlier. Well, so. you know, they, they all kind of started out as, I mean, the writing started out as something to do when I wasn't working. Mm. And uh, the fight direction started out as something that I did when I was at drama college and maybe I could do a little bit, you know, when I'm in a show or something to earn an extra little bit of money. I had no idea that it was going to become a career, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, a, a huge part of my life now. Um, so nothing, nothing was done with any intent. The only thing I did with intention was to become an actor. Mm -hmm. um, everything else was, was a sort of byproduct. Um, yeah, that I never expected, never really expected to be um, of any huge importance. But of course, you know, like all plans, it, I was wrong. Yeah, but plans <laughs> always go wrong, don't they? So, so it turned out better than you imagined, really. Oh, God, yes. I mean, I, I just, um, yeah, I mean, from, from nothing um, to, I tell you what it did. As an actor, you you sit by the telephone. I'm sorry, you used to sit by the telephone. You now have your phone with you all the time. Mobile, yes. Um, but you used to just sit and wait for an audition or for somebody to call you and, and say, "We want you." Mm. You know, because you know this is the product that we sell, um, and you know the rejection is huge. And any actor will tell you that, whether they're successful or not, they will tell you that the rejection is huge. Mm. Um, but as soon as I started doing doing the fights, one, I didn't realise there would be any any anything like the the demand that there was for it. Mm -hmm. um, and suddenly I wasn't waiting for the phone to ring. The phone was ringing, saying, oh, lovely, can, can come here and, and do Romeo and Juliet? Can you come here and do Macbeth? Can you come here and do Private Lives? And In so demand. it went on and on and on. Mm. And then only a only a few short years after I started doing it, um, I was talking to casting directors at Granada, who I all knew anyway, because I'd, I'd done telly for them. Um, and they said, oh, you're doing, you're doing fights now. And I went, yeah. They said, can you, can you do it on television? I said, yes, all the time. And so I went in and started doing Coronation Street, um, which was fabulous. Mm. Just, just wonderful. You know, um, I, was, I was working with the television icons. Um, and I, 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 I might have been a bit skeptical at first because um, I didn't, didn't know how, how it was going to go. But mm. everybody was so lovely that it was, it was just a joyous job. Um, okay. And, you know, all, all the soaps are very different. They all have a very different feel about them. Yeah, they, they all have their own unique identity. Yeah, uh, but all the people are... Are lovely, you know. They're all they're all part of a family in you know whatever little world they're in, whether it's uh, Hollyoaks or Emmerdale or Corrie, you know they 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 all exist in that bubble, popular word now. Um, but it, it's as I say, they're all different, but they're, it, it's lovely. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, and I feel incredibly lucky to have done it mm. and still be doing it. That's that's the that's the thing. Okay, well, that's brilliant. Um, it must be nice to be in demand, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, as I say, we said at the beginning, the first, the, the, the last year has not been great, but it, yeah. it's coming back now, so that's that's good. Right. Okay. Well, just going back to Brookside because we've got some questions about your fights and stuff. Um, but on this question, it was just because the bulk of your scenes were with Paul Usher. Um, I've got to say, Sizzler was a very good teacher to Barry Grant because. He also became a big shot gangster a few years after you'd left. 
<laughs> um, I, I just imagine a great actor like Paul was uh, good fun to work with. Um, yes, he was. Uh, we got on really, really well, but only after he'd said, you've got big boots to fill, uh, which, which made me go, oh, all right. Is that what he said to you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. So that, that was your first day? Yeah. And did you feel nervous by that? Oh, just a little bit. Yeah, just um, a little bit on your first day. And I, and I just, I just thought, well, all right, if, if that's the gauntlet you're throwing down, then A, I'm not going to rise to it, and B, let's, let's see what can happen here. And in the end, we became really good mates, which was, which was lovely. Well, not even in the end, you know, very quickly we became good mates. Um, we, you know, and which helps, because if you're in most of your scenes with him, yes, um, it helps. It always helps to get on with people. You know, it's it's never good to to have a bit of friction um, mm. and then pretend you're having a great time on camera. Mm. It's it's you know work is you've got to have a good time. You know, nobody makes you do this job. Um, so if you're not having a good time doing it, you really shouldn't do it. Definitely. That, that's you know um, I I hear lots of moaning in my professional life all the time, and I just kind of go well, you know. You can always go and work in Tesco. So we really stop it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, Paul I, I did a lot with Paul. Did a lot with um, Sinbad. Did a lot with um, Terry. Um, oh, Brian Regan. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And um, and it, you know, it it, it was uh, you know Sue Johnston did a lot with her. Um, oh, it was you know it was a very. It seemed like a family. Everybody was incredibly welcoming. And there were a brilliant cast in your era. Oh my well. God, yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of people have gone on to do some amazing stuff afterwards, you know. I mean, I've wanted Paul Usher to come on and do a chat like this now, but he's a very private man, I've been told. He doesn't really socialise with any of the other cast and he's not into interviews and stuff. Because I'm always getting people asked saying, oh, get Barry Grant on. And of course, I'd love to. He's one of my favourite characters, but... Obviously, I'd well, rather... I mean, Paul, Paul was always very into his music. He did it. He did it. He had a band and he was always doing that. Um, and he did uh, I think it was Liverpool one. I think he did. And then he went. Yes. To the bill. And the bill. Yeah. Um, and I, I did some fights on the bill and I got to see him down there. Um, but it was it was a different environment. And I was I was just coming in to do. You know, the odd days fighting. So uh, I, I don't I don't. I don't think I saw him more than once down there. Mm. Um, but it was, you know, it, 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 this business is very strange. You know, you don't see someone for donkey's years and then you bump into them and it's like you were talking to them yesterday. Yes. And so, you know, that, that's how it is. You just, you pick up friendships and make instant friendships and then you go off and do other jobs. You don't see people and then you meet up again and you, you've got reminiscences and mm. you, you get, you pick it up where you were. It's, it's very, it's a very, strange profession like that and of course social media brings people together as well doesn't it because a lot of people a lot of the cast have come together again i haven't seen each other for years i yeah. know you've left twitter now haven't you i have left twitter and i stopped facebook many years ago um don't so blame a sensible person <laughs> very various reasons um facebook i i found that you know there were loads of people that i didn't know um and twitter i just started getting a lot of abuse on it from a certain person so i just i just left Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. But sometimes it's just better to just get on. And I, I, I actually thought it was going to be a huge wrench because I was on Twitter all the time. And then when mm. I stopped it, I went, "Oh, okay. Don't have to. Don't have to read that anymore. That's fine." And you felt um, better for it. And I, yeah, felt better for it. Your profile's still active because I've still, I'm still following you is on it? that. Obviously, yeah, yeah. Is it? It I is. Know that. <laughs> I'll have to do something about that. But it did. I did have a look because when I was trying to find you to, about this interview, I sort of looked and I think you hadn't tweeted. It's a good couple of years that you left yeah. us. Yeah. It's. I think it's coming on for three years now. Yeah, and I, you're I, not and planning any returns anytime no, soon. Not at all. No, I, I, I can. Once you've got away from it, now it's like I prefer. I, I, I can't see any reason to go back on it. Um, and nobody really wants to hear my opinion on things uh, i've got lots of opinions um you know so have i and nobody wants to hear mine but i tell them <laughs> <it>. <laughs> um but no so i i shan't be going on facebook and i shan't be going on twitter and i i haven't done any others i, I don't 
And it hasn't affected your life in any way because no, I, I always thought if I didn't do these interviews, then I, I'd sometimes think I junk social media sometimes. I really do. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I am glad it's there, but it's yes. not for me. No. Um, so I, I don't miss it and um, I shan't be returning. Well, I mean, if you don't miss it, then what's the point, really, I suppose, isn't it? Um, but, I mean, there is a chance um, in the summer, don't forget that you're invited to, if you yeah. wanted to attend. It's the Brookside reunion. It's all still in the planning state at the moment. We've got, But there are some people that were in your era um, that are coming on. Michael Stark. Oh, are they still around, are they? Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Lewis Emrick and Efna Brown, because I gather... Oh, yes. Yeah, um, I can't, I've got the list somewhere. Well, Ethna's with my agent, so, uh, but again, I haven't seen Ethna for, well, I haven't seen Lewis or Ethna for donkey's years, so. Oh, well, this might be a good opportunity if, yes, you're, might. if you're not working on that night. Well, I've said, you know, I'm, I'm filming all the way through till September uh, and the schedule is crazy, like every schedule. Um, so well, I bet that's free. a godsend after what you've just told me about. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's a... A real godsend to be honest yeah um but if i'm free yes i'll i'll come and join and say hello to these people that i've not seen for 30 years cool i mean obviously you don't i haven't finished the questions yet okay but, i mean yeah i would love you to come along and obviously i think there's about 15 on so far i have no idea how we're going to structure it we're doing that near of a time there's somebody that's going to help me um because i imagine we've just the host and 15 people all talking it's going to have to be structured properly so mm -hmm. i've no idea i've never done anything like that before so i just thought well we'll just go for it then anyway a big cast reunion <laughs> well if i get the invite and i'm free i'll i'll be there oh well thank you very much i shall let you know the dates when we get them near of a time thank you okay um i just wanted to another uh, couple of questions just about brookside because looking back on your brookside days what scene or scenes particularly stand out in your mind? Because I know what I've, I've already told you about mine. Um, I, um, well, they, they probably stand out in my mind for reasons that not particularly artistic, I would think. Um, I had, um, we did one scene, uh, they, they, they kept struggling to find places where Barry and I could meet. Oh, yes. um, and, and we decided one day, or they decided one day, that we would meet Nosley Safari Park oh. at the Sea Lion Enclosure. Right. Um, which, I've seen that scene in years. <laughs> uh, which I, you know, I thought, well, I don't really know why we're meeting in the Sea Lion Enclosure. But apart from the scene that we did, which yeah. was quite short, um, I got to know the Sea Lion Keeper. Nice. And he got to see, you know, he, he said, come, come, come back, and, you know, we'll, I'll, I'll give you a tour. So I went back another time and uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I went back and, you know, I kind of met the, crazy, met the sea lions. Um, and then a few years later, when my, my daughter was quite little, I went back and she met the sea lions and she oh. thought it was just brilliant. <laughs> um, so that was, that was one scene that I do remember. And we is it Catherine is it Catherine Dock in Liverpool? It is. Isn't yes. It? Yeah. They um you know they they just kind of done it up and there were all these fantastic warehouse spaces and we had this massive massive area that was my office. Um, oh yes, yes, down and, a very dark murky looking yes, very dark, huge with one desk and one sofa in it. You know, there was nothing in it. Oh, there was one weird sculpture that I wish I'd bought, to be honest, and didn't. Um, mm. But uh, but um, it was a... I just loved filming there. And there was one where um, we went into the dock, and I I think it was the end of an episode where I just... Um, I said something to Barry and then was whizzed away in this boat out of shot. Um, and that was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, to be honest, you know, every time I went to work, I had fun, really, you know. It, it, well, there were all fun scenes that you were in. Yeah, I mean, it's, as I said before, it's really miserable if you go to work and you don't have a nice time. Why, yeah. why are you bothering? You know, you might as well go and have, have a nice time. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that every day was easy. Uh, some days, you know, with filming is always fraught. Mm. Um, but I, I do try to keep myself away from that and just let everybody else panic. 
Um, <laughs> and I just, you know, let them get on with it. And when we're ready to film, we get on with filming. Um, I just think it's the best way to be, to be honest. So they're the scenes that I remember that stand out for me. Um, I mean, I no, I can't remember any others. Ask me another. <laughs> well, I'll have to send them to you. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, oh, yes. I mean, well, I mean, you've already spoken about this. I mean, did you have much to do with any of the, um, the other cast? Because obviously... You were in a bubble with Paul Usher, really, weren't you? But yeah, but we we um, we used to we used to go. We we there was a whole load of us that went to see Michael Jackson in concert. Wow! And there was a whole load of us that went to see Bruce Springsteen in concert at Sheffield. I, re I do remember that. Really? Uh, I know I know Sue was there um, and a few other people, uh, and I was got on with Sue and I've worked with her on Coronation Street since. Um, but I remember going going to Bruce Springsteen, who I'm a huge, huge fan of, and I was yeah, very excited because uh, we we got to go in the VIP lounge and all that. You know, not with not with Bruce Springsteen, he was he was in his own VIP lounge. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but there we were, you know, having sort of drinks and whatever, and then we went to our seats, um, and people were turning around and going, "Oh, look at so and so from Brookside." And I was sitting with Bruce Springsteen. That's the important thing. You know, why, why are you taking pictures of us? It's, it's him over there that you should be interested in. So that was very odd. Um, Michael Jackson, we were, I remember we were at the, right at the back of, I can't remember where the concert was, but it was in the open air. And it was right at the back, the, the, oh. the, the, the bit, bit we were in. It was a nice enclosed area. And honestly, you couldn't see a damn thing. No. Um, and a few people ventured out to go into the crowd to get closer. Um, but that, that, you know, so I've seen, I saw Michael Jackson, um, but I don't really remember much about it, to be honest. No. Uh, but we did this thing um, called shop assistance, yeah. which was, it might have been for the Terence Higgins Trust. Mm -hmm. um, I think it probably was, to be honest. And what it was, was um, we, we were asked to go and be shop assistants in Covent Garden in mm -hmm. London uh, for the day. And, and I was completely up for that. You know, it was a nice little jolly, to be honest. And the idea was that, you know, you would, you would, be a, you would serve in the shop uh, and each, each artiste was given a certain shop to go and work in. Mm. And um, we then... You know, and then people would come in and they would buy something and part of part of the money that they paid for the goods was given to the Terence Higgins Trust. You know, so mm -hmm. that was it. You know, it, we, we were we were taken along. And we were all given our own sort of PA uh, that kind of kept. Kept everything running. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't remember the name of the shop, um, it was a nice clothes shop. And I used to work in menswear when I was younger. Oh, there you go. So I thought, oh well, this is good. I can I can just jump into this. You know, I know your size, sell you a suit. Um, and I walked up to this shop in the morning, and there was this long queue outside. And I didn't realise, but it was for me, which was lovely. And I went in, um, and I sat down, and I, I I didn't sell anything all day. I was quite disappointed by that, but I was I just sat there. Um, yeah, I think it was 50p for a photograph and 50p for an autograph or something. And it was God, it wouldn't be like that now. <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I don't think I get 50p now. No. Um, <laughs> so, and, and all day long, I, I was just signing away and having my photo taken. It was great, it was lovely. And then in the evening, um, Quite a lot of us went to the bar, not for, not to a bar where we we served behind the bar. Um, uh -huh. and I made everybody put their change in a bucket. I, I refused to give them any change. Whatever they gave me, I said it's going in the bucket, and they they <laughs> agreed. Um, and that was that was a fabulous day. You know, very 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 exciting and very nice, really, for all of us. And I think we raised a lot of money, which was good. Um, it was, uh, yeah, I have fond memories of that day.
Yeah, and fond memories of the cast, obviously, as well. Yeah, so yeah. we did have many good nights out and stuff. Yeah, as we all got on. Which one? Ah. Brilliant. Okay. Well, the next one is... Um, I mean, do you obviously keep in touch with any of the Brookside cast? Uh, I know it's a case of, yeah, you just sort of say <laughs> you're going to stay in touch and then it's one of those you just sort no, of... No, I, I mean, as I say, I've, I've worked with um, Sue Johnston, um, Owen Corrie quite mm. a lot, and, you know, had long chats with her. I uh, worked with uh, Paul Usher on, what did I work? Uh, what did I work with? I think I went back and, and worked with him on, I, honestly, I don't know, but I know it was for Lion Pictures. It might have been, it might have been a later episode of Brookside, to be honest. Mm. Um, but I, realistically, no. I, I mean, I see people from time to time and we go, oh, hello, blah, 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 mm. working, but um, in general, no. It's one of those things, isn't it? We all intend to keep in touch with our school friends and you mean it at the time and then it just, well, it just happens, doesn't it? You drift apart, don't you? Um, now, are you okay to talk about this? Because I just wanted to ask you about the uh, Paddy Considine, uh, Considine film that he worked on. Tyrannosaur. Yeah, uh, which starred Peter Mullen and Olivia Colman, which is a great film. I didn't know that you you were the uh, the fight coordinator for I that. Did, yeah, I did little stunts on it. Yeah, yeah, and that was a really gritty film. How long were you filming that? Uh, uh, not filming about work. eleven weeks, I think, something yeah. like that, all in Leeds. Um, did you work with Paddy? A, it's a great script. Um, Paddy Paddy wrote a, a short, mm. um, and got a lot of praise for the for the short and then I think somebody said he should develop it and he developed it into a, a full length film mm. and I went in to meet him and the producer um you know that I'd never met Paddy I'd never met the producer somebody had recommended me um and they said yeah okay come and come and work for us which was which was lovely um Paddy's very intense mm. uh, lovely to work with but very very intense knows what he wants um and it was Peter Mullen was lovely. Uh, so was Olivia Coleman. You know, everybody, um, everybody was. It's a good cast. I was just going to say it was a really good cast as well, wasn't it? And it's a, a very film in part, dark, it? disturbing yeah. film, really. Mm. Um, but it's a good one. You know, oh, like, absolutely. Yeah, uh, it, it's 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 quite a harsh story um, with a, a shot twist at the end. I think. Oh yeah. 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 Quite a surprising twist. Yeah. Uh, so I was very pleased to do that. That was that was really something. Really? You know? um, so because it, Paddy uh, wrote and directed it, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, of, one of the highlights, really, I think, of my career. I think that's a, a really good thing to be attached to. And did, the film itself got quite a few awards as well, didn't it? Yes, I believe it did, um, mm. which, is, which is nice. I didn't get an award. Uh, uh, but it, I worked on it, and the film got awards. That's that's okay. But that's good that you said that you were the person responsible for the, this award-winning film. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure that I was responsible. Responsible for the part films, of it. I should say the the great the great stunts. I should yeah. say. I, I added. I added to it. Yes. Um, and um, that's good enough for me. That's all right. I've just got to say, because you look at old programmes sometimes and these fight scenes and, you know, you have the sound of the slamming door when they punch somebody in the face and stuff. And you think, oh, that looks so fake and stuff. And now, but films like that, I think even Brookside, when I look at fight scenes in Brookside now, they've, that, that really just look real. Um, well, that's, that's the, the object of the job, really, mm. to make it look real. Um, there's no point... Uh, putting violence on screen or on stage if it doesn't somehow, if, if it doesn't cause a reaction, it can, you know, you can um, put it on stage and on film and get a laugh, or you can do it and have people shrink back because it's deeply unpleasant. Um, like to, but, but whatever, however you do it, it's there for a reason and um, you know, the writers put it in as a as a catalyst moment to take characters from one state to another state, um, and it's it's very important that it's done right uh, because if if you as an audience member sit there and 
and not affected by it if, if it doesn't make you laugh if it's supposed to if it doesn't make you shrink back in horror if it's supposed to uh, if it doesn't make you feel sick if it's supposed to mm. then there's no point doing it no because i mean you know my 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 wife sits and watches the watches tv now and she you know now ever since she's known me she knows what i do obviously and she goes oh terrible punch wasn't that awful <laughs> yeah and I, you know i go you know, either yes or no oh, i quite liked it you know whatever um but it, it certainly changed her way of watching things yeah but it's it is it's important to me that whatever i put on stage creates whatever it's whatever the writer and director wanted to create at that yeah. moment got to be in um, line with what they wanted yeah, yeah. um you know my job is to to make to make the moment work um and to do it as safe well as quickly as possible and completely safely you yeah. know then i feel like then i can get out of everybody's hair and go home <laughs> but that's <laughs> that's that's my job okay well that's actually the next question uh so we're on the last couple of questions now okay um because obviously that wasn't the only soap that as we said before brookside it was a bit about um because you had roles in coronation street and emmerdale as an actor and then obviously you've organized fights as well for them so i just wonder if you could tell us a bit about the characters you played and some of the fights coordinated uh well coronation street i played um uh johnny briggs um what was his character mike baldwin mike baldwin yeah dreadful um i played his um either his i think it was his accountant that sorted out something quite shady for him um and that was you know a, a, a nerve-wracking experience uh he was lovely I, mm. I you know in the years to come johnny and i got on really well um Bit of an icon really i suppose but you know yeah. did, and i i got on with everybody at cory it was, a, it, was a, it was a good place good people um and uh that's the only time i was in cory mm. um i might have i think i might have doubled for some people getting hit or whatever but you wouldn't you wouldn't see my face um and emmerdale i i think i've done three times now as an actor <laughs> um, I, I, I tell a lie i think it's now four because i think uh not last year the year before i i um I, I played a policeman and grabbed hold of somebody because i thought it was easier for me to do it rather than get a supporting artiste to do it and me to teach them how to do it properly yeah um, so four times i think i've been in emmerdale now wow. um and yeah it, it's uh again you know working you know i've, I've played barristers in emmerdale um wow. Well, I, don't, I think I played two barristers, definitely a policeman, uh, and a, and uh, and a gangster. Oh, um, you play and I played another gangster. Yeah, I played another gangster, uh, <laughs> which I thought I thought, oh, this is good. This this gangster will this has got legs. One episode gone. That was the oh. end of that. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, but you know, always fun to do. Always oh. fun. Because I know I've seen some pictures on your website. I think there was fights with Fizz and in Gail's house. Oh, yes, yeah. Uh, you've done probably too many that you can remember, has it? But you've done uh, yeah, I mean, we uh, had one big, big brawl that started in the Rover's return and um, left there and went out onto the street with Dev, um, Jimmy Harkishan, you know, a, a, there was a massive fight and sort of started there, came out the door sort of over a car. We, kicking and punching in the street that was that was quite major yeah um on emmerdale we did one or oh, a couple of years back which on twitter apparently twitter or facebook it it uh it got the accolade of the, as the best punch ever oh brilliant um, yeah you know it was just another day for me but I was like, <laughs> uh you know i mean as i said try and do try and do best i can on on every job uh and it was very the director kind of phoned me and said well have you seen this and i said no it was um did it go in, did it go in the daily mirror or something? i can't remember but anyway i got the accolade of best punch ever um i'm not sure that that's true but it's very nice that somebody thought so very yeah okay well i just want to ask because i know that we've spoken before about this because um coming up to the summertime you're going to be very busy oh. um you mentioned the rfc and you've got some other work to come up a new major tv series coming up soon haven't you yeah 
Is that as an actor? Or? No, no, it's no. Um, as, as a fight coordinator. Can you talk um, about that now? I, I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to or not. Um, I think I am. Um, it's, it's, it's all based around the Artful Dodger and the life before he met Oliver Twist. Yeah. Um, it's uh, written by um, an actor and a writer, and it's, it's you know, uh, called Reese Thomas, who's kind of got it all together with NBC and the BBC. Um, it's 10 episodes, uh, series one, so we hope it goes to more series. Um, it's very, it's very funny, it's very gritty, and it's a kind of sort of caper. Um, you know, every episode is a caper. Uh, it looks like we've got some nice guest stars in it. Um, and can you tell us about the guest stars, or is that? I don't think uh, I can. Um, we're gonna have to swatch it, aren't we? Yeah, I think you're just gonna have to watch it. We're um, just gonna have to watch it. <laughs> um, and it's you know, we start filming on Monday which is which is fabulous you know we've been prepping the last few weeks um looking at locations and rehearsing done a bit of rehearsing um and it's it i the scripts are great and the cast so far is fabulous um and you know that we, we've got small children in it playing big parts really? so it's uh it's, it's a bit of a number for them i think it's 18 weeks of filming so Wow. Uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a big number, um, but it's I think it's going to be great. You know, what else? Would I say? Part two this time. But I, but I do. I genuinely think it is. I think you know. It, sometimes you read a script and you you flip through it, um, but these scripts are, are really good. They're, they're they're good stories and they're good characters, and they they kind of all interlink and they twist and turn and they're they're yeah very. Very clever. I'm intrigued now. I want to know more, but I'm going to have to keep. I was just about to say we'll have to do part two in about six months. So you can tell me all about this series. Yeah, I will. I'll be able to tell you all about it once we film. You know, come back in September. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we might see you before then. Hopefully, fingers. Oh yes, in the Senate. And I've also, you know, while while this is filming, we start back with the comedy of errors for the RSC. Ah, that's the RSC. Brilliant. Um, which we were supposed to be doing last last March. Yeah. Um, and now we'll start with, we've had the ninth uh, change of start date, and now it's May the 17th, I think we start rehearsing, ready to go into an open air space behind the Swan Theatre in Stratford. And then it goes on tour, then it goes into the Barbican, that's the idea. So that's uh, the Comedy of Errors, which um, it hasn't got a lot of fighting in it, but it's got enough for me to go down and, and do some work. Then in the summer, we're supposed to be doing an Agatha Christie called And Then There Were None, um, which is, I think it starts at Northampton, then hopefully goes into the West End. That's, that's the plan. And, yeah. you know, the big show that I was absolutely, well, I, I just loved with the Zorro the Musical, which wow. we were, um, we rehearsed and we got, we got within one night of press night um, at the Hope Mill Theatre in Manchester last March before yeah. we had to shut it all down. Um, and I must... and the producers, I think, lost a lot of money, um, but they're still adamant they want to do it again. And we were going to do it um, at the end of last year, then we were going to do it at the beginning of this year. And I realistically, I, it, it's not to do with people not wanting to do it, it's to do with a theatre space, actually, yeah. it being free. Um, and I think that, um, you know, the might happen in the autumn or it might be the start of 2022 but it's a that is a wonderful show i mean it's sword fighting from start to finish um oh, and you do that don't you so, oh i do that yeah. yeah and it's music by the gypsy kings wow it's all sort of gypsy jazz and it, it's just a, you know the good director good md musical director um and the choreographer was fabulous you know it, it there's just it just all came together and uh, it was it was a wonderful show and I, I kind of thought, oh, this is going to be my pension, then we shut it. No. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't know when it will go back, but I think it will go back. And the thing is, it's, it's difficult to keep the cast, you know, after all that time, you know, you want it, you want to stick with. The same people that made it so good, but, you know, we'll see it's. Well, um, TBC. It all sounds very exciting, though, and you're going to be kept busy until well into next year. That's my plan. 
Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my plan. Make up for the last 12 months, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I like being busy. You know? Yeah. Um, it, it, it's not that I live to work, but uh, I work to live, really. Yeah. But it's, um, I do, you know, I like working. Mm. And while I can, I will. As long yeah. as people keep phoning me, then I'll keep on. Yes. People. That's the thing. That's it. Mm -hmm. Well, Rennie, I've just got to say, a huge thank you as those are all the My questions pleasure. i hope you've enjoyed them and the questions were yeah it's been great you know now that we've not kind of uh done anything that i i felt awkward about it's great i've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it so. yeah and i've thoroughly enjoyed having you and i'm hoping that you'll be here well i shall keep in touch what i'll do later is when i put the video up on youtube i'll send it to you yeah thank I'll you to you sort of near of a time say about june time when we've got a date and who's coming on and yeah go from there fabulous yeah. I, I, yeah, I look forward to that. It's yeah, a pleasure. thank you very much again for joining us. It's been really fascinating, actually. And I, I hope some people watch it. Sorry? I hope some people watch it. Oh, of course they will be. Lots of people are saying they've got to see Sizzler, so <laughs> lots of people. Oh, good. <laughs> well, thank you very much. What I'll do is um, I'll send you the video over in a couple of hours' time, and yeah. uh, thank you very much, and I'll be in touch very, very soon, and I'll say... Good night to everybody. And oh, yes, I don't know if you've heard of Sheila Greer. Sheila Greer. Sheila. Sheila Greer. She was on Brookside. Oh, it was a couple of years before your time. She played uh, one of the nurses and uh, had a scene. Uh, so she was in Taggart. So, well, she's on next Thursday as oh, well. Oh, right. OK. Yeah. And then I've got Ethna Brown in a couple of weeks as nice. well. Nice. So, Good. Brilliant. So we look forward to all of that. And yeah. thank you once again, Rennie Krupniski. Thank you. Been thank an you. Absolute pleasure. And we'll say good night to everybody. And I'll speak to you very soon, Rennie. Good night. Good night. And thank you again. It's been a pleasure. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank good. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, it's got to end the meeting.